This program is made possible by Jungle Interiors, located in the Young Street Center, corner Roby and Young. Jungle Interiors is Halifax's only silk plant store, offering over 150 different types of silk plants. Jungle Interiors has convenient hours to serve you. Furnishings provided by Gloobies Furniture and Appliances Limited. Each and every purchase is backed by our written guarantee of savings and satisfaction. Halifax has a lot of uh, important uh, things about it, uh, unique and special. One of the uh, special things about our city is the number of universities. Uh, the greatest number of universities per capita probably in North America, certainly in Canada. Well, we have uh, Dalhousie University, originally uh, down in the Grand Parade, in fact, our city hall is built on the foundation of the original uh, Dalhousie College. St. Mary's uh, in the Goresbrook grounds, uh, Tons, or the Technical University of Nova Scotia, in the center of the city, and in interesting, uh, the old burying ground, St. Paul's Cemetery, is now being turned into a park, and that'll be a nice neighbor for uh, tons to have when it's all fixed up. And then the art college, probably the biggest art college in Canada, and uh, King's, and I was talking about this earlier, and if I remember correctly, I think the former president, John Godfrey, said it was the oldest Anglican university in Canada, North America, or the world. I'm not sure. But knowing John Godfrey, you have to... Uh, perhaps uh, take it with a little bit of a grain of salt. But we have some great universities, six, the Atlantic School of Theology. But the very special one is Mount St. Vincent, out on the rolling hills by the basin, with a great history, uh, three to 4,000 students, full and part-time. And the special thing about the Mount is that it's dedicated to the advancement of women. And the person who was out in front carrying the banner is Dr. Naomi Hersom, who was here with me. And uh, so it's nice to have you, because I think there are a lot of things about the Mount that maybe people in Halifax don't appreciate or don't know. Uh, dedicated to the advancement of women. What are, how were you doing this at the Mount? Well, originally, the university was the only one that would accept women uh, in, a, in a very open way I see. because those opportunities were denied to women, generally speaking. Now we not only know that women are accepted into universities, but we find that we need to help those women who perhaps have not had the opportunities earlier in life, and so they come to us as older, more mature people. Uh -huh. We try to provide programs and make those programs accessible for women who may be at home part-time or working part-time. And we also try to choose to emphasize the kinds of programs mm. that uh, will help women become independent and mm. uh, move on into professions or in other spheres of um, activity. I remember when I first heard the statement that the Mount was going to have a special 
a niche that it was going to uh, be dedicated, as you say, to the advancement of women. Mm -hmm. And it seemed at that point that they weren't going to be welcoming men as students. And I think that wasn't quite true, because you have about 15 percent uh, male students. Yes, we do. We uh, do not discriminate on the basis of yeah. gender. And uh, we open our programs to male applicants as well as female applicants. But it is true that we are uh, working to do the kind of research and to do the kind of teaching which will uh, help women overcome mm. some of the inequalities that they have been facing for many, many centuries, actually, and but, many years. But you were saying that the Mount was formed uh, to fill a need because women were not easily accepted in other universities? That's quite right, especially in some of the programs. In certain like programs. In medicine, medicine for law. example, and so on. And so in order to um, assist women to be able to get mm. university degrees, uh, the Sisters of Charity founded the university. I see. Now you have um, uh, a chair in women's studies? Yes, we do. And uh, an institute f in women's studies as well to carry on research and publications that are particularly focused on issues related to women. And focusing on issues related to women would also be, uh, I suppose, your uh, child care yes. program? Those are the traditional areas. Uh, yeah. We have a very strong food sciences program as well as a developmental psychology mm -hmm. program, which is uh, very, very strong. Mm -hmm. And those, I think, would be the kinds of programs that women traditionally mm -hmm. would move into, teaching, elementary education, and so on. But what we have done is to build on those strengths and move into areas such as public relations, yes. tourism and hospitality management, yes women in business, yes. and those are more recent developments yeah. that uh, open doors for women. Uh, also relating to women, because women are living longer, living longer than men, and everybody's living longer. Gerontology, this is a uh, program? Yes, it is, and we offer a certificate in gerontology. Mm. But again, as you say, because uh, people are living very much longer, and women tend to right now at least, to live longer than men. This is a particular interest in the care and the well-being of older women. Yeah, you mentioned uh, that the Mount was formed to fill a need because uh, women were not uh, welcomed into some of the programs, law, medicine, and so on. Yes. And uh, recently, however, things have changed, and we find that half the entrance class in law, medicine, or tons, or, techn or engineering, uh, are women. Well, it's true, as you say, in medicine and law. It is not yet true in engineering. But a good number. Yes, but the deans of education, uh, or rather of engineering across the country, are very concerned because uh, it is difficult to attract enough women into the engineering uh, courses. Well, I know when, when it was difficult to get into the into law or medicine and engineering because uh, they didn't have uh, room, mm -hmm. and they could on only so many could be accepted. Uh, the dean of medicine uh, told me that, uh, or the dean of law, and I think it applied to law or medicine, that more women were getting in because admission was based on, uh, on your record, Yes. and the women had the better records. Well, uh, I think that's been often the case in the past, where uh, it's been a matter of denying them entry on, on, uh, for reasons other than scholarship. Mm. But uh, I'm glad to say that that, that situation is changing. Mm. Our um, interest at the moment, however, is to help women who traditionally have not ver been very interested in going on in the sciences and in mathematics. So we are establishing a new chair at the Mount on women in science, yeah. and we hope to encourage women to overcome some of those attitudes that they've had that they can't do math and science right. and those are learned attitudes right. we believe and we're hoping to uh, have special places and special courses to help women move into those fields. Well you have all these courses and programs to help women as you say move into fields and we're going to go back in history a little bit and to the days when 
a Mount St. Vincent was needed because women were not accepted or didn't enter uh, other programs. Back to the days when it was considered that there wasn't any point in a woman going in for yes. higher education. Yes. Because I think partly that uh, the knowledge that her career would be interrupted by pregnancy, having a baby, and having to take a year off, and so on. No daycare then, and none of the other support systems. Mm -hmm. What has happened that has changed this so that women today can uh, look forward to careers? Well, I think we really witnessed in the last few years a, a social revolution, a time when uh, we now know that women can and want to be independent. And uh, it is important to recognize that at the beginning of this century, women neither had the vote nor the right to own property in many instances, yeah. and were therefore not considered to be very responsible. In fact, they were, were really treated like the property of either their parents or their, their male parent or their husbands. And uh, they, were, they were grouped together as uh, women, idiots, and children in some of the uh, terminology in the law. But yes. at the beginning of um, the, uh, well, after the World, World War period, 1918, mm. uh, th we had the law that women would have the right to vote. Uh, by 1929, we had a law saying that women are persons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, then we had property acts uh, introduced in the various provinces where women then could have the right to own property. So that uh, it's been a long time coming but mm. by the time Canada reached its 100th birthday in 1967, the government was prepared to set up a, a commission on the status and of women. This was important. I Very important yeah. because of the things that were addressed in that commission study. Mm. Uh, it, uh, it reported that women weren't in public life in the number that they should be represented in yes. Parliament and in other uh, governmental uh, areas. They weren't in corporate life. Yes. Uh, they, they did not have uh, equality in the workplace. Uh, they certainly did not have child care to enable them to live in yeah. a way that would permit them to use their talents, nor did they have equitable divorce settlement no. law. Marital rights. Uh, another reason for uh, women not uh, having a uh, strong place or not moving in great numbers into these programs, higher education or careers, was that uh, it was the accepted uh, uh, behavior or uh, it was the accepted norm that women uh, would have somebody to look after them. Yes. They were dependent. Yes. And then they, I guess they didn't like this because they, they are moving now towards independence. Well, it was a great waste of talent. Uh, people whose um, gifts uh, in terms of mm. ability to think, ability to uh, take on responsibility and so on, in uh, many cases those talents were not being used. Mm. Although I would be very quick to say that the many, many hours of work and the wonderful contributions mm. of volunteers, many of whom were women, sure. uh, certainly enriched the lives of, of, our, of our cities and of our sure. communities over the years. But um, that doesn't mean we aren't, don't have volunteers well, now. They're doing it in addition to uh, contributing yeah. to the professions of but the workplace. A, a very uh, local change is that uh, I think in Halifax today, if you find that um, the women, uh, th that when you approach the doctor, the doctor is a woman, mm -hmm. you're not shocked. In fact, you're fine. That's fine. Yes. Or if you are looking for legal advice and you find you are dealing with a woman, mm -hmm. it's no longer a shock. No. It's becoming accepted. We have enough people. We've, we've uh, attained a, a critical right. mass, if you will, uh, so that we, we can accept that. They don't that. stand out as much yes. now. It's, uh, it's the accepted uh, norm. Oh, I'm glad to say that's true in many cases. I wish it were well, true in all cases. Well, this is what it's all about. You're moving mm. towards it. Yes. But, uh, it's certainly uh, some marked progress. Mm. Interesting when you go beyond, we've talked about the need for the Mount and why it, it, it was established and what is happening there to overcome this, uh, uh, these disadvantages or the inequalities that you perceive. Mm. Uh, and you're doing this through education. Yes. Uh, and 
the re going back in history, <clears throat> the reason for this happening at all, it goes right back to Adam and Eve, and we have the man coming first, mm -hmm. and we have uh, boys and girls, uh, always the male first. Yes, you're talking about <clears throat> the way in which language, language. reflects our thinking about people in society and the, the terms we use and just the very way we use them. Well, and it's interesting to look at some of the research that has been done because sometimes people dismiss uh, those who would object to that kind mm. of language and they say, well, what does it that, matter? What, what does it matter? But when you look at the studies that have been it's done, it in fact does matter well, because of the... Uh, power of words. Of, that's right, yeah. and the attitudes people adopt as a result. And your attitudes would be formed uh, by uh, certain words and expressions. Who comes and so first? On. Who deserves to come first? It's who the must come first? Master of yes. ceremonies. <laughs> and I, I, I'm not sure who it was pointed it out that master is a strong word. Yes. Mistress. And this person was suggesting that in university they might, would they have mistress of science or? something like that, but it's Master of Science, yes. it's Master of Arts, mm -hmm. uh, Bachelor of Arts. That's right. Uh, we don't have It that. certainly reflects our history, and we haven't yet tackled that as a problem in terms of the university world, I, I must admit. What do you do about it? Do you change the word mankind? The idea yes, we, we do believe that we want to use uh, inclusive language rather than exclusive language. So everywhere we have a chance to do that, we try to find ways to do so. We've been through a very interesting process recently because the Mount uh, has a new charter on its way through the legislature and we expect that that's going to be proclaimed this summer, as a matter of fact. I'm told it's likely the first charter for a university that will be uh, worded in it's such a, a way meet, that we will lake. not have we will not have uh, exclusive language in that charter. I see. They've worked very hard with the cooperation of the legislature to be sure that the wording uh, recognizes that uh, the Mount uh, is a is a university that recognizes women uh, as well as men. And uh, and it's in literature where you have. Um, Kipling's if, you know. And, uh, and well, we would... understand that, and we take that into account, but we also know that uh, as people read, they should be conscious of what words are doing to them, yeah. what the language <clears throat> is doing to them. And I believe this is true for women and men, and that because we do have women and men at the Mount, we are learning together what it means to create a different kind of society where equality is uh, recognized and practiced. Uh, one of the big uh, steps to, uh, yet ahead is pay equity. Yes, and we are very much uh, uh, moving toward that at the Mount at the moment. And, uh, and I guess all Canada is moving slowly yes. uh, towards it. And It'll be by steps and phases and Yes, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult process yeah. because it means that uh, people who, whose jobs are being reviewed find it a, a very uh, hard yeah. thing to look at a job objectively and yeah. not the person who's occupying that position. Well, it's, it's equal pay yes. for equal work. Yes. And uh, defining... Uh, establishing mm -hmm. what is equal work may yes. be different. There are a lot of difficulties. Yes, there's some difficulties, but I've lived long enough that when I started out as a new graduate from yeah. university, that I was paid uh, $500 a year less oh, yes. on the basis of gender alone. That's right. Now, same uh, educational qualifications, the same responsibility, yeah, sure. but paid simply on the basis of gender. And, uh, and so I've lived through that. Now, we're talking about something different. We are now talking about uh, looking at different kinds of jobs and seeing whether oh, the remuneration for those one jobs to another. will be uh, fair. That's right. Yes, that's uh, a different kind of thing. Right. I understand that uh, on the pay equity uh, field that uh, women uh, are or were paid. I think it's changing. Something like 67 cents 
for each dollar mm, or less than that, yes. and 50 cents to each dollar in the non-professional fields. Yes, yes, it's very much lower. And, and that's part of why um, implementing a pay equity scheme is, is yeah. very difficult because uh, most employers have um, an, uh, a budget that they can assign to, uh, yeah. to pay. Uh, and to salaries, and the, the result is that has to be redistributed within the workforce, and that causes tensions. But I think we have the same problem, and, and I think we could have criticism in, in the city operation, mm -hmm. in that we have uh, probably work being done on a level with other work, but there are different classifications. Mm -hmm. So they're different. One is the secretary, uh, who is apt to be a woman. Yes and the other is, has another name. Right. And it's probably equivalent level work, mm -hmm. but the pay is different. Yes. So we have to look at some things in, within the city. Yes. Well, I think every corporation is having to take a look at what is happening. That's right, and that's what the pay equity studies do. They look at that in terms of the complexity of the decisions yes. that the person must take, the working conditions, uh, those sorts of the, the environment in which the person works, all of these things are taken mm. into, into consideration along with the responsibilities that are, mm. that are actually carried. Well, a lot of changes. I mean, today you have to think before you open the door for a woman. Well, or, what? isn't that courtesy <laughs> that each of us uh, as human open beings... Open the door for another man. That's right. Well, I, I that. believe sure. it's courtesy. And it doesn't matter whether it's and a man respect. or woman. respect, exactly. And there are times when it's appropriate just because of the way in which we're walking along and entering a building where I wouldn't think twice about opening the door for you and under um, similar circumstances, I'm sure you would do it for me. Uh, don't count on it. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I won't. <laughs> but uh, then the, the idea of <coughs> uh, at, a, at a table, at a, perhaps at a function, uh, uh, moving a chair yes. for a woman. Yes. Probably less of that done now. Women are quite capable of I think so, and I don't think people um, worry about it as much as don't they once did. Don't think about it. Don't make a no. There are certain occasions, I think, we all behave differently under certain mm. circumstances, and there are some very formal occasions when, when uh, as you know, at home, we always use the very best dinner set and the very mm. best silver, and, and we behave in rather formal mm. ways. And there are other occasions in day-to-day life that we, we simply move along in, in very informal ways. And I think sometimes our behavior is like that. I, I uh, th think that at the Mount, uh, you must have some real challenges uh, in handling some of the sensitive issues. For instance, uh, today, uh, uh, people living together uh, before marriage. Yes. How do you handle this in teaching at the Mount, the young people that you're dealing with? Well, I'm not sure that we, quote, handle it, as you'd suggest. No. We do have counselors available for our students, as I think all good universities do, where students who uh, want to think about these things can go and talk to somebody who's older and has mm. some wisdom and, and has a view of, of what mm. happens when people perhaps unwittingly move into relationships that can be potentially damaging mm. or or potentially very sad. Mm. Uh, we also have seminars and uh, w uh, opportunities for our students to talk these things over so that we, we provide that. But Discussion. in terms of actual, uh, for example, teaching or preaching, as we, one might have expected in, in days gone yeah. by, that's not the direct kind of activity Except that we Except you do on stress and teach values which may have a Yes, connection. we do that, and we also put a good deal of emphasis on our uh, chaplaincy. We have an mm. ecumenical chaplaincy at the Mount and a, a very active program that is carried on so mm. that uh, our, our students, young men and women and older w men and mm. women as well, have, have an opportunity to mm. attend those sessions and to participate. Yeah. You know, um, a few years back, many of us were uh, very pessimistic we thought, what is going to happen in the next 10 years with all these students who were young men and wearing long hair and dressing uh, to attract attention, I guess, and uh, really part of a great rebellion. Mm. And everything fell into place, and they're the most responsible people, and uh, 
almost too serious sometimes, yes. aren't they? Well, I've heard criticism of university students that they're s studying too hard. Mm -hmm. Not all of them. No. But many of them. I, have I'm, to I'm, do. I'm rather amused, I must say, having been in the education scene for a fair number of years now, to watch the way in which these cycles come and go. That's and uh, every group of parents, I think, uh, has some criticism to make of the yeah. of the younger generation, and and it, we seem to swing from one, one to the other. pendulum swing That's to right. the other. And quite frankly, I see very fine young people uh, getting excited about learning, sure. finding out that there is a whole world there for sure. them to explore and to to become part of, sure. and finding ways to enter into yeah. it and be meaningful for them. So th that's uh, it's a great feeling when you go to a university or to, to a school and you see, or you meet these people and you see what is happening. Well, you know, uh, Dr. Herson, when I talk to people in Halifax sometimes who are here visiting, I'll often say, go to the Mount. Good. Well, Glad because, to hear that. <laughs> well, it's such a beautiful, perhaps the most beautiful campus for a university well, in Canada. Well, we're only prejudiced a bit, and, but we think so. That's right. Uh, but apart from that, uh, what you were doing out there is exciting yes. and, uh, and important, especially for women. <laughs> and you're out there in front carrying the uh, banner as president. And I want to thank you for uh, being here and telling us the very interesting story about Mount St. Vincent. Thank you. Thank you. I am This program is made possible by Jungle Interiors, located in the Young Street Center, corner Roby and Young. Jungle Interiors is Halifax's only silk plant store, offering over 150 different types of silk plants. There's free parking and convenient hours. Visit Jungle Interiors. Furnishings provided by Gloobies Furniture and Appliances Limited. Each and every purchase is backed by our written guarantee of savings and satisfaction. This program is made possible by Jungle Interiors, located in the Young Street Center, corner Roby and Young. Jungle Interiors is Halifax's only silk plant store, offering over 150 different types of silk plants. Jungle Interiors has convenient hours to serve you. Furnishings provided by Gloobies Furniture and Appliances Limited. Each and every purchase is backed by our written guarantee of savings and satisfaction.
of the city of Halifax to inform you all this is your city.